All right, this is going to be a demonstration of something similar to the Foucault gyroscope experiment, except this gyroscope is set up so that it can only move in one axis, and that's pitch. That's all it can do. It can pitch up and down. Now, of course, if I just leave it here without the thing spinning, it just sits like you would expect, motionless once I stop messing with it. But it's going to do something different with the gyroscope running. So first, I'll turn on the gyroscope, trying not to disturb the balance. already starting to act, so I'm just going to gently move the balance back again. And now, turn on the laser pointer, which unfortunately turns itself off after like a minute. In other words, don't buy this laser pointer. Okay. So, what we should see is the laser pointer move down. It's just rocking back and forth there. It starts to try to go down. My legs are slightly touching this too. So backing away from the table. What should happen is periodically it tries to move down. And it's trying to move down because the Earth is rotating and it's trying to seek, the spin axis is trying to seek celestial north. But in this, the mount where I have it, it can't move as far as it would want to. It can't move arbitrarily far, so it ends up just oscillating back and forth. But that motion of the laser pointer that's due to the Earth. So, once the laser pointer shuts itself off, I'll shut down the gyro, Control, I will turn the laser pointer back on, and it should remain motionless. Okay, so 
the laser pointer has helpfully shut itself off. I'm going to now shut off the gyro. Flywheel is completely stopped. I will now turn on the laser pointer. Okay. I think it's still sufficiently balanced. So I've now backed off to where I was before. There's still a tiny bit of motion. But it's not nearly as dramatic as it was before. I think what we're seeing here is just well, I don't actually know. Maybe slight air currents, maybe thermal noise, But with the gyro off, the laser pointer is staying very close to whichever of those markings it is. It hasn't moved like even half of an inch. Whereas with the gyro on, it was jumping around up and down with, with across about an inch. So, the reason of course it's not moving now is because with, without the gyros spinning, the whole mechanism just moves with the earth, whereas when the gyro was operating, it was, the gyro was trying to keep an orientation and then precession moves it towards celestial north. But now it's motionless, except for it looks like maybe it's very slowly going up. Possibly because the items that are taped to the chassis here are, you know, very slowly coming unglued. That's it. So with the gyro on, we see it bouncing around. With the gyro off, it's virtually motionless. And that's one demonstration of the Earth's motion as visible in a gyroscope. All right, as an addendum, um, let me just explain the construction of the mechanism here a little bit. So this is a super precision gyroscope from gyroscope.com. Cost about a hundred dollars. Um, 
I've then mounted it to a, a steel plate that's running across here. The motor is attached with a couple of screws. Those came with the kit, as did the battery pack, which is up here. Um, pretty much everything is just taped together with masking tape. And, and the rest of the stuff is just things I happen to have. The only thing that extra that I bought is a laser pointer, which is disappointing in that it turns off. Um, the key here is this bearing structure. Let's see if I can lift it without messing it up. So, oh shit, there it goes. Um, this should hold. Maybe. <laughs> so on both sides, I can't seem to get it balanced now. Good enough. On both sides, there are a, there's a push pin. The push pin is going through the steel plate. There happens to be a hole on either side of the steel plate, so the push pin is sort of nestled into that hole. And then the pins are sitting on a quarter, a U.S. quarter coin on each side, and then that is supported by the side of this Tupperware container. Um, the battery pack is mounted, I'll turn it a bit more, the battery pack is mounted so that it's off towards the front, it really wants to tip on me. backwards. <laughs> so somehow it's entered negative stability. I've generally been trying to keep it slightly positive. I don't I don't know what changed to make it go negative. All right. Again, hopefully that'll just stick around. Um so the battery pack is offset to the front to offset the weight of the motor in the back. Then I also have um, one of the pegs that came with the gyroscope screwed into a hole here and then a bolt is taped to that and I can by screwing in the peg I can move the bolt in and out but only in whole turns because the bolt is hanging underneath the peg um, then over here I've got another bolt which has a nut on the end that I sometimes use for fine-tuning, although this just doesn't have enough mass to really be effective. And this little clamp is just for balance, and then there's there are two dead batteries taped to the bottom of the gyroscope uh, for ballast. So without those batteries, the center of mass would be above the tips, the, the line going through the tips of the push pins. And therefore negative stability so I'm pulling the center of mass down to give some positive stability and then piling mass on top of the steel plate to go back to neutral or negative stability and do the lateral balance. The whole thing is inside of a Tupperware container because I was trying to do a two-axis gimbal by having this thing float and I did um, th it, this floats uh, however, this uh, pitch mount is still, I mean, we, you just saw in the demonstration how even, even when the gyroscope tries to go down or up, it, it gets restored to where it was very quickly, and that interferes with my ability to make uh, the gyroscope just follow an arbitrary direction in space. Um, yeah, I don't know if you saw it, but there's like... 
a little piece at the bottom just came untaped uh, as well. So like this thing periodically needs to be retaped. Um, but hopefully that it would answer any questions about precisely how this is built. It's not a great design, but like I say, the, the key to making this work is this is the bearing, um, and this is actually similar to what Foucault used originally. He used, as I understand it, uh, two knives so that the edges of the knives were sitting on something uh, hard, and, well, I thought a point would work just as well. So I, I used these two pushpin points sitting on the quarter, which hopefully won't be deformed by them, and, and therefore it retains um, a low static coefficient of friction. So that's the construction.